Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Digital Signage Works podcast. In this episode, we'll be talking about using common tools to update content. I'm Martin Lindsley. And this is Robert Mullen. Robert Mullen, the creator of the Digital Signage Works podcast. <laughs> sort of, yes. <laughs> so why did we come up with that name? It came to me in a dream. Awesome. Very, so you're getting sleep now. So I am good. getting sleep now, and I had a dream, and when I had that dream, the dream was about digital signage works. Nice. And it does work. Right. And I woke up, and I picked up the phone, and I called you, and I said, digital signage works. And you said, okay, because you understood. I did, because I was having the same dream, Uh-oh. but you weren't in it, so okay. it was a little weird. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so some common tools we can use to update our content. So what might some of those tools be that people are familiar with that could be used when it comes to their digital signage? Well, uh, let's take a step back, because we do have tools to help make digital signage work a little bit better, but uh, let's let's kind of talk about what it is first. So. You have your network, it's all set up, you have your screens, everything is working great, and you even have content going, but you want to keep that content up to date. What do you do? Well, there's several options. Number one, you just go straight into the main software and you make your updates that way. Uh, That's like the first level of sophistication, but the second levels and higher are much more uh, attractive, don't you think? Uh, and you sure. would use tools. Am I going off on a tangent here? Well, I was just wondering where all this great stuff is in rehearsal. Well, no. You always make uh, me ask a question, and then I back up uh, as you explain <laughs> what I should have said. Well, so, that's, I'm so that's sorry. great. That's good stuff. I'm not, not easy stuff. to work with. That's why I okay. have to work here, I guess. Okay. <laughs> in in the podcast land where nobody that's else right. has to That's right. That's right. It kicked me out of NBC. <laughs> Uh, So some of the tools that we use to update content when you're not using the main software would be, you know, Excel or PowerPoint, Photoshop. Uh, There's this one that you like, this Canva. Canva. Very nice. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with it as you are, but uh, here that's a fantastic tool to use. And, of course, text files, databases, uh, even desktop folders, which we'll have to explain because I imagine some people might not know what we mean by that. Well, and as far as Canva goes, we actually have a blog article mm-hmm. uh, that's going to be out about using that. So it may already be on there. I'll have to check with our uh, release schedule. But that's an actually a online-based graphic creation tool. Very easy to use. Uh, actually, one of our graphic artists suggested that to a client who did not have anything like Photoshop or anything like that, and they were able to uh, create some content very easily. So uh, check out that blog article on the DaVentry blog, and uh, that'll introduce you to Canva. We're not sponsored by Canva, but uh, one of our team members found it, liked it, thought it would be useful, so we're happy to share that. Though Great. You do have a Canva bumper sticker. I, I have you? a Canva bumper sticker, and if Canva are listening... Um, Cookies are nice. If you send them to us, we'll, we would enjoy that. <laughs> and we'll put pictures of your cookies on our digital sign. There right? you go. Perfect. Hey, how's that? All right. So we have we have kind of our tools. Uh, you outlined a little bit of those. So let's get into some specifics as to how these could be used with digital signage. I mean, if we have these tools, do we need digital signage? Well, I still got to get the content to display out on the screen. So it's just kind of a, a way of uh, creating that and. I think one of the benefits is you're using something you're already familiar with. You know, most people are familiar with uh, either PowerPoint, Photoshop, something like that. So they're instead of having to learn how to create content in a whole separate program, a whole digital signage program, if there's ways for them to do that, create content in what they already have, then that's a, a much easier workflow. Great. Yes. Uh, the question that one would ask themselves if I have this digital signage software, is there a way I can make it work with these other systems? And sometimes the answer is yes. Okay. So let's start off with PowerPoint. Okay. You mentioned that. So what, how could PowerPoint come into play? Well, uh, PowerPoint's a very popular product. Uh, just about anybody with a Windows machine has a copy of PowerPoint. And many people are comfortable with making slides with PowerPoint. So rather than make people learn a new software or a new graphics program or anything like that, why not just allow them to use PowerPoint and import those images straight into the digital signage? Wouldn't that be great? That would be awesome. It's a fantastic thing. 
Yo, I'm glad you invented that. I did invent Man. that in my sleep, and I woke up, and I called you. <laughs> and I was Bill Gates? Yes. Oh, okay. I said, hey, Bill. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the nice thing with PowerPoint is sometimes um, maybe corporate headquarters has certain graphical elements that they want to show out on the screen, and they'll develop that in PowerPoint. Right. And so they'll send it out to different uh, locations or whatnot. And so having the ability to import that right into the digital signage certainly would be a great feature. Uh, another thing with PowerPoint, it's easy to make videos. Well, easy, as easy can be. So you're able to put graphical elements and different things into PowerPoint. You can actually export that with, uh, I believe it's in MP4, or it could be WMV format. I have to check on that. But you're able to export a video. So uh, in there, there's some simple tools that you can use for... Um, you know, maybe doing different transitions or things with graphics, making them move across the screen, bounce up and down, whatever, um, so that you're able to actually produce a video through PowerPoint. And uh, some people aren't aware that it has that capability, but it certainly can be handy if you have some type of uh, video presentation or you can even export your whole slideshow as a video right? and be able to put that on, on screen. So that makes that nice. It's great. Yeah. Now, using a text file... Uh, this could be good. You want to post some events or get some some quick uh, update to a text region. You're able to just put that into a text file and save it. That's correct. It's it's probably your most basic. I like to call it the most basic remote data source for digital signage. So you know, rather than again going into the software directly, you can set up a text file on your desktop. And that text file is viewable by the server software for your digital signage. So whenever you make updates in that text file and hit save, that information will then make its way to your content playing on your digital signage. A great scenario would be uh, you might have someone working at your front desk uh, in the lobby of your business, in your hotel or your manufacturing company, and you have somebody working at the front as a reception uh, uh, worker. And they can um, see somebody coming in the front door. Super important VIP client of yours. Everyone knows who this is and everyone wants to treat them very well. Um, this reception person could... Uh, I'm being very political correct with that, am I? It's just you're, you're struggling with what yeah. a reception... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway... I won't tell anyone. Go ahead. That you person can, can have access to Notepad on the desktop and put in welcome VIP really fast, hit save, and be done. And that could be a great thing because then the screen hanging in the lobby can say welcome VIP and uh, really create a great impression upon them. Okay. Yeah, that's that's great. Or if yeah. uh, maybe there's events for the day or something that could be tied into that Excel sh or uh, into that text file. And so, you know, every day the person who's working reception, how do you like that? There you go. Could go in and just enter in what events there are. And then it will look at that text file and be able to show that information. And another thing, what about, uh, could you use that text file to show like scrolling text at the bottom of the screen? Kind of like a stock ticker type look or, um, that, you know, how would that be? Do you recommend that? Hmm. Well, uh, sometimes it's technically possible and, and it is a popular idea. However, in practice, it can be problematic. Quite often, whenever I walk into a place and I see scrolling text, I can see that somebody went to jail for some reason, but I don't know who or why because what I missed. What are you watching? You know, just whatever text <laughs> news feed is coming in on, right. at the hotel lobby or something. It, it can be kind of difficult. However, um, you can put the same information up there as a still content, as a like the whole sentence or the whole paragraph could be there. As a quick blurb, so and so went to jail because they were bad, and then there's the whole thing, and you got to see it, and then the next idea will come up, and it will just pop up as a whole sentence rather than scroll in. Yeah. It's easier and faster to retain that information. I, I think that's a great uh, discussion to have. We can have a whole podcast just on some uh, best content practices for that type of thing. Because we do get asked that at times about having scrolling text at the bottom, and it, like I said, in in theory, it sounds like a great idea. But, I mean, I get car sick, so I have to <laughs> read text that's going by. Eh, maybe not for me. But, yeah, we can discuss that in a lot more detail. We have plenty of those little anecdotes, things we've learned over the years as far as what actually 
even though it might sound good or seem like common practice, but what's going to give the best experience and really transmit the information. If you can't get your point across or if people are so busy reading the ticker that they're not paying attention to anything else on the screen, it defeated the purpose. Correct. Like that little sound effect I had. Uh, it was good. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, so next we have drop folder or using a desktop folder. How would you do that? I'll tell you how, Rob. What do you mean, Martin? <laughs> there you go. I was waiting for Martin, you. Martin, to... <laughs> what, is, what is this drop folder thing? So let's say you have a folder, just a regular Windows folder on your desktop, and that's connected through your digital signage software to a region or maybe even a page in your digital signage content. Well, you can put images, full screen images or whatever, into that folder and your digital signage software could read that and say, oh, okay, well, here's an image. I'll grab it from there and I'll play it out on the screen. You don't want an image to show, you just remove it from the folder. You never have to train anyone how to use the digital signage software. You just say, hey, here's your folder. Just put your images in here or give them the dimension size or whatever uh, that they need to be so it fits in correctly with the content layout. And they are able to manage their own portion of the digital signage that way. Great for HR departments where they can put in pictures of, say, the company picnic or company events. Um, also for promotions. So if you want to promote certain items, if you're a restaurant, you can drop in your pictures of your hamburgers, your cheeseburgers, your special high uh, yield item of the week. And, or if you're a manufacturer, you know you can put in pictures of your current uh, or most interesting product that you made. It's super convenient, super easy. You put pictures in there, you let them be, and then when you're ready for new ones, take the old ones out, put new ones in. Just as simple as that. Right, and so uh, go back to if you just have one or two people who are actually managing the digital signage system, this gives them a nice way to be able to give other departments or other uh, individuals access to updating that information without bothering them. Should I say bother? I don't know. Sometimes <laughs> you're right, yeah. But you're right. It's a great way to staff out responsibility without giving everybody access to the software. Yeah. I was actually talking to an individual, and they complained kiddingly about that uh, using the drop folder system because they said they gave that to somebody who used to come down and visit them in their office. And now that they had the drop folder, they never came down and saw them anymore. So, Oh, what, like a little office romance or something? Oh, I don't know about <laughs> romance, but well, whatever they were doing there. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, and now uh, database connectivity. We mentioned Excel sheet. Um, we got things like SQL. Maybe it's a, um, a hotel and they have their property management system, which obviously you're using a database. Maybe it's uh, Delphi or uh, CITY, some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. So being able to have your content change based on what's in a database certainly is uh, very useful as well. It's, a, it's one of the main tools that you can use to completely automate your digital signage. So if you are a hotel and you're using Delphi or CITY or one of the others like that, then um, rather than having to, you know, digital signage replaces printed paper, but rather than having to update your digital signage manually every day, just tie it into the database. And then the people who are already using that database and putting information in there will also be updating your digital signage automatically because we'll just pull from that same repository of data and have it display on the screens at the right time and have it go away at the right time and have it look nice. Yeah, and actually the ability to pull from a database is fairly new. I mean, in the past, you've had maybe digital signage that would react to maybe a mechanical uh, device or something. Uh, there's a nice article by Dave Haynes over on his website, 169.net. Right. And in that article, it's uh, digital signage old can be new again, apparently. He talks about how back in like 2009, 2008, it was kind of a thing in uh, a commercial environment. What do you call that? When retail. People shop? Retail. Yes. There you go. It's, <laughs> it's from the Latin meaning retail. <laughs> Ah, very nice. Yeah. Excellent. You are just a linguist, aren't you? I am, aren't I? <laughs> so like, let's say somebody shopping for uh, shoes is the example kind of uses in the article. They pick up the shoe. There's a, a sensor that triggers, and, oh, the TV in front of them shows an ad for that particular brand of shoe or something like that. It's kind of interesting. At the end of that article, 
Uh, he brings out that showing content specific to what a shopper is looking at at the moment is great, but it is really, really not new. It's something that a lot of software platforms can or easily could support. Then he says what's fairly new and limited to fewer vendors is data-triggered content that isn't tied into or related to mechanical switches. It's a totally different animal. So that kind of shows that that whole database uh, content being able to have it have your content change based on what's going on in your database this is a little bit newer but now everybody has data there's just tons of data out there and analytics and all kinds of things that uh, we didn't have access to before so having that ability uh, for all these different uh, organizations and industries you know that's kind of an untapped resource at this point we got the data what do we do with it well right. with digital signage you're able to kind of sort that out and then you can have it update your content keep it fresh uh, by just looking at the database. So with all these great tools out there, why aren't more digital signage companies utilizing them? Why aren't they taking that approach of, hey, you know, we'll, we can use text files, we can use drop folder, PowerPoint. I mean, you find a few of those, but it doesn't seem that, that that's overwhelming the market. Well, it's if you look at digital signage as a whole, there's a lot of different uh, types of digital signage. You have so the big whiz bang type of companies like the video wall companies that are doing really the you know impress you or look cool type of thing that are in lobbies or you know malls things like that and then you have the other end of the spectrum which is like a really simple digital signage that you know will just plug into a regular TV and play basically a slideshow so there are a few companies that do do um, all this kind of stuff. Those are the enterprise level digital signage companies, the companies that appeal to manufacturing and industrial type of companies. Uh, so there's, I guess there's just a few of us that do that. However, um, there's a lot of jobs for digital signage other than that. And that's why you don't see it with everybody. Right. Plus, if you're able to update your own content and manage it very easily, you're not going to pay somebody else to do it. So at times it might seem like it's in some, you know, a company's best interest. Hey, let's not uh, give the user too many tools to make it easy on them. We'll uh, make digital signage a mystery and complicated, and then they'll have to call us. And there's Martin. He is advertising his <laughs> other website, digitalsignageconspiracy.com. Go ahead and visit that. He'll tell you everything that's going on hey, there. The truth is out there. Okay. <laughs> but you do have a point. Uh, it might be part of someone's business model to... Pro, uh, provide more services, but uh, trying to trap you into it, I'm not sure about that. I can't. I just watch the X Files. Okay, so I'm, <laughs> I'm up on that stuff. I reject your thesis, <laughs> sir. All right, very good. Well, thank you, Rob. Do you think I'll be? Oh, able now to, the show's uh, over because yes, I, absolutely. I, I dis disagreed with you. You disagreed with me finally after all these episodes. <laughs> so now you are done. Okay. Stay tuned next week when somebody else will be joining me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if you'd like to learn more about content for your digital signage, what are some best practices and how to be able to successfully design content. We have a nice ebook available on our website. So if you go to www.noventry.com, go to the resources section and look at our digital signage downloads, you'll find our ebook, Five Steps for Successful Content Design in Digital Signage Systems. So we invite you to go there and check that out, download it, and uh, see if that is able to assist you in any way think you'll find it helpful yep and as always if you enjoyed listening to us and rob talk about his dreams you can subscribe <laughs> and thanks for listening yes thank you very much for listening this is robert mullen and martin Lindsay checking out